Republican politicians should be very concerned about what their party will look like if there is no Donald Trump leading the charge. With the runoff coming in Georgia pretty soon, in fact, voting, I believe, is already happening, and no Trump on the ticket. I'm not entirely convinced the Republicans are going to win. More importantly, with Mitch McConnell abandoning Trump and calling on Republicans not to support him on January 6th for the Electoral College vote count, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a ton of Trump supporters to say, then I won't support you either. But there is one other group, well, kind of two other groups that are in sheer panic over what the future will hold without Donald Trump. Why, we have the media, of course, CNN and MSNBC fret over post-Trump future, says the New York Times. And the never Trumper Republicans over the Lincoln Project are now like, well, you know, to be completely honest, like we're actually anti-Republican too, which makes no sense. Because apparently the Lincoln Project was formed to say we are principled Republicans who just think Donald Trump is bad. And with your support, we can restore the Republican Party. Now that they think Trump is on the way out, and most people do for obvious reasons, they're starting to panic about what they're actually going to do. So the Lincoln Project, which is based around being the party of Abraham Lincoln, the Republican Party, now is the pro-Democrat Lincoln Project, which Lincoln literally fought a war against the Democrats and soundly defeated them. But uh, okay, make an organization called the Lincoln Project that helps the Democrats. Fine, sure, whatever. It's no secret that before Donald Trump, the media was seriously facing, like on the verge of collapse. The words of the former CEO of Vice, Shane Smith, what was once the hottest properties when he said, we will see a bloodbath in digital media. And it wasn't just digital. It was everywhere. I mean, CNN even downsized their studio. There were buyouts. Many organizations have seen uh, layoffs, mergers, sale after sale acquisition, companies just outright collapsing. But the one thing that really held them all together was orange man bad. Oh, it it hurts to see him go. These poor media companies are going to have nothing to write about, and they know it. And that's the big question many are asking. What next? Well, there's been talk about potential Trumpism. Maybe they'll write about Trump supporters and uh, uh, where they go next. Maybe Donald Trump will form a shadow government. That's the best they could muster up right now. And you know, I got to be honest. I wanted to make this segment about the Donald Trump shadow government, but it's just too stupid. Listen, Donald Trump may stay and do something. I don't know, but I'm not going to sit here and entertain these stories that claim Donald Trump is going to refuse to leave the White House. That's what they're claiming or that, you know, he's going to form some kind of shadow government. You know, it's just crazy to me. Maybe he will. Okay, fine. What am I? I can't make these predictions. Sure. But I tell you, the media is doing everything in its power to can like to try and drum up some kind of shock content. Maybe things are just more boring than that. Maybe there really will be some kind of civil war. I don't know. But I can tell you this. The media wants it more than ever. If it bleeds, it leads. If anything will spark chaos, conflict and contempt for, you know, among people for their fellow man, it's going to be the mainstream media, making sure that no matter what happens, there's always something bad. Life is always awful. You know, it's funny. I'm kind of doing the same thing. Calling out the media for what the media does is me in the media doing essentially the same thing. Isn't kind of stupid? There's a lot of problems, but I do still think that I'm doing much better of a job than they are because at least calling out the absurdities is the best I can do. Now, to be fair, I do talk about the potential for some kind of civil conflict or war or whatever quite a bit. And maybe I could only say, oh, well, that's my honest opinion. But I can tell you that the mainstream media is laying it on as thick as possible and telling you to your face that without Trump, they're in panic mode. And the never Trumpers at the Lincoln Project are pretending they ever actually cared about any of this. It's a grift. Look, before all of this happened, before Trump, before COVID and all this, I, th- you know, earlier in the year, I did a segment for the Tim Castillo podcast. We we're talking about Sonic the Hedgehog and Birds of Prey and movies and cultural issues. So I'll tell you this. If Trump leaves, I don't care who's in office. I'm going to be talking about what's going on. But they don't know what they're going to talk about because they were collapsing already. Maybe it's a market share issue, but sure. Let's dive into the latest crazy conspiracies of the media concerned about Donald Trump's refusal to leave office 
and the coming Trump shadow government. Before we get started, over to head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are many ways you can give. Got a P.O. box. You want to send me some stuff. But the best thing you can do, share this video. If you think I do a good job, it's rational and reasonable, and you appreciate me calling out the media and the never Trump grifters, then please consider sharing this video because it really does help support the channel. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit that notification bell. Here's the story from the New York Times. Ratings have hit new highs, but executives and journalists at both networks, CNN and MSNBC, are uneasy about the year ahead. They say CNN and MSNBC thrived during the Trump years, reaching new heights in ratings and revenue while devoting countless primetime hours to criticizing a White House antagonist their viewers just could not quit. Now faced with a Trumpless future, top executives at the rival cable networks have summoned star anchors and producers in private messages in recent weeks, seeking answers to a pressing question. What's next? People at both networks know that viewers who abhorred President Trump may no longer need their nightly therapy sessions with Rachel Maddow or Don Lemon. And President-elect Joe Biden seems unlikely to generate the 24-7 grist of drama and scandal It resurrected cable news, taking it from a dying medium to a focal point of modern politics. So even as CNN smashed a 40-year viewership record last month, and MSNBC notched its highest ratings since its founding in 1996, journalists and executives at the network say they are uneasy about the year ahead. What happens, asked one MSNBC on-air personality, when you don't need us? We didn't need you in the first place. You were just lying and spewing bile and vile garbage in our faces. And a lot of people were just addicted to the outrage. Look, I fully understand. There's probably a, it, it, it goes both ways. It is. I'll tell you one thing, though. My criticism has often been with the establishment politicians of which they're still in control and the mainstream media. Maybe we're all just dogs chasing cars and we wouldn't know what to do if we ever actually caught one. Maybe then you just sit back and say, I don't know. And that's what these news organizations are going to do. They got nothing left to complain about. Congratulations. You chased the orange man out. You're going to go after Joe Biden now? I don't know. They might make you look like hypocrites. Maybe what they'll do from now on is just make the Republicans even more of the bad guys than they've already been doing for quite some time. Perhaps they don't need Trump. They'll just say the remnants of Trumpism and squeeze every last drop they can. Like this story. What do we got here? Donald Trump reportedly told staff he won't leave the White House. He won't leave the White House, they say. Yeah, Trump is telling people he's refusing to leave because we're not quite at January 20th yet, where Trump is supposed to vacate. Well, and we're not at January 6th yet. But I'll tell you what really, really grinds my gears. They keep saying it's over. It's over. It's over. Trump lost everybody. It's over. It's over because they, they want you to click it. They want the people who are addicted to media to be clicking it, being like, yay, we won. Trump lost again. Trump lost again. And then they come out with these same articles. Trump won't leave. Trump won't leave. Pick one. Is it over? Is Trump leaving? Or are you going to keep screaming and vomiting in our faces? I just can't stand it. Now, I'll tell you, we have real problems. We have governors who are violating the Constitution, like Cuomo. Talk about a despot. That guy's nuts. We have very serious problems. We actually have a problem with the economy right now. We have people losing their jobs and losing their homes. They're being evicted. And it's because of these Democratic despots. Trump was not the dictator they claimed he was. So while they screamed as loud as possible in our ears, orange man bad, it was the Democrats destroying the economy. And what do we get? Well, listen, my respect to Josh Hawley and to Bernie Sanders for coming together on some kind of stimulus plan or package. We'll see if it actually happens, right? But why is it that it was the Republican who had to come to the Democrat to propose a solution the Democrats wanted when it was Democratic governors who destroyed the economy in the first place? We got things to to complain about. It certainly is not Donald Trump. And I'll tell you my favorite part in all of this. My favorite part is never Trump movement splinters as its villain heads for the exit. My friend, what my friends, what did you think the never Trump or Lincoln project was going to do once they were making all this money? But then Trump certainly couldn't be president forever. I mean, even if he did win re-election, it's only four more years, right? Well, here's what Politico says. 
Is there a market for an anti-Trump Republican party now? Said one prominent member of the anti-Trump Lincoln Project. I would say no. So guess what they're now claiming? They're now claiming they're anti-Republican. So how is it the Lincoln Project? The Republicans are the party of Lincoln. Politico reports the defeat of Donald Trump might have been the easy part for never Trump Republicans. Next up, taking on the more elusive target of Trumpism. Oh, fantastic. With their boogeyman gone from office. More than a dozen leaders of the never Trump movement said in interviews that they see their work as far from over once Joe Biden is sworn in on January 20th. They want to keep the heat on Republicans who serve as Trump foot soldiers and to provide cover for those who reject far out conspiracy, who reject far out conspiracy theories and attacks on democracy. OK, so you're telling me Trump is going to refuse to leave. You're telling me his foot soldiers will remain. These people are just desperate for money. That's it. They're lying to your faces. Now, of course, you have diehard Trump supporters who keep saying Trump is going to win. I personally do not agree. I think Joe Biden will be the president. And I think one thing is true. Like with many other Democratic uh, presidents, the mainstream media will just fall back and give Joe Biden a clear runway to do whatever he wants. Now, I don't know how long Biden will last. I think ultimately we'll see a Kamala Harris presidency. The far left didn't like it when I said that it was kind of a bummer that we'd get our first female president through procedure instead of, you know, an actual vote. They were like, how dare you? What do you mean? How dare me? Maybe I was over the target when I said that. Maybe that's what's actually going to end up happening. And it's not far fetched to think, look, with all due respect to Joe Biden, I'm not trying to drag him for his age and with uh, all due contempt for his corruption. I'm not trying to rag on him for being old, but come on, the dude's pretty old. I think it's reasonable to say he's probably not going to last a full term. And I'm not trying to be mean about it. He's just 78. He's actually, I believe that's past standard life, ex- average life expectancy. Now, to be fair, he's a rich guy. He can afford all the best health care, right? So, you know, we'll see how long he lasts. Either way, Kamala Harris is going to be doing a lot of the work. But here's the best part. Let's read this. They say more than a dozen leaders of the Never Trump movement said in interviews, they see their work from far from over. But how how to do it is another story. After beating Trump and creating a, a permission structure for some GOP voters to back Biden, the task now, they said, is to turn back Republicans' embrace of authoritarianism and transform their party in the process. I'll tell you what they're actually doing. The Lincoln Project is an excuse for people to claim they're conservatives but support authoritarianism. The Republicans haven't been the one shutting everything down and destroying people's lives while going and getting fancy haircuts and celebrating and partying and going out to restaurants. Why? That is, in fact, the Democrats. The Republicans have been actually not very authoritarian. In fact, they're doing almost nothing. It's Antifa, the far left, that goes around smashing things up and setting autonomous zones. It's Democratic governors who are the ones passing, uh, declaring these edicts or ordering these orders. And it's the police in these cities who just blindly follow and say, whatever you say, boss, whether it's a law or not, oath breakers and morons. I have no sympathy for these people, these off these cops. Yet they're going to claim it's the Republicans the whole time. I'll tell you what they're really saying. They're saying they're coming for libertarianism. That's it. Be it left or right. Now, people like to claim that Antifa is left libertarian. That is not true. Left libertarians do not use violence to get their way. That's not liberty. That's authority. Beating people is to assert your authority over them to force them to do what you want. Liberty is through free trade, free markets, through cooperation and understanding and agreements, contracts, etc. That's what they're mad about. The Trump base is not authoritarian. In fact, they're quite libertarian. Donald Trump wants to end the war. They don't like that. And guess what? Trump says he's going to veto the defense bill as a big F you middle finger to the establishment. And they rally against him, Democrats and Republicans alike. It is the authoritarian structure that is fighting back and trying to win. Now, the never Trumpers admit the task is daunting. They're vastly outnumbered in a party dominated by Trump, even after his defeat. They say the reality is, is there a market for an anti-Trump Republican party now? Said Stuart Stevens, I would say no. Just keeping the coalition that elected Biden together will be a challenge in and of itself, said Evan McMullen, who mounted a conservative third party presidential bid in 2016. Moving forward, the movement has to, quote, bring more Republicans onto our side of this fight. What does that even mean? You have most uh, you, you, you have the Republican leadership for the most part. I guess the, uh, the minority leader in the House, Kevin McCarthy, 
uh, sided the Texas lawsuit, sided with the Texas lawsuit and supported Trump, sure. But Mitch McConnell is certainly saying don't support Trump on January 6th. Can we recruit never Trumpers to run for what? Democrat policies? A former, says Tim Miller, a former spokesman person for Jeb Bush and a leading never Trumper. Oh, great. That guy's just oozing charisma. They go on to basically mention they're anti-Republican and that's it. Just admit it. But you know what? I don't care about the Republicans either. I don't care about any of these crony sycophants. It's all absolute garbage. But I'll tell you, they like to talk about a Trump shadow government, Trump refusing to leave. You know, to be honest, maybe there's something to it. Trump's certainly not giving up, right? We have this story from Just the News. No backing down. Trump lawyer Jenna Ellis says elections stolen from President Trump. She described this as an egregious error that must be remedied. So perhaps when CNN produces their unhinged ramblings, claiming that Donald Trump is telling people he will refuse to leave, maybe they're being honest. I don't know. Ultimately, I'm not entirely sure what to make of all of this. I know the media is desperate to push that narrative. I know at the same time that the left is claiming Trump won't leave, they're claiming it's fear mongering to say that he won't leave. And there's no real consensus as to what's actually going to happen. And there is a journalist I actually respect, Michael Tracy, who says in an article for Unheard, enter Trump, America's first shadow president. Maybe that's what might happen. Donald Trump will launch some kind of movement. Maybe he'll refuse to leave. Maybe he'll go to Mar-a-Lago to the Winter White House, then claim to be the actual president, refuse to back down, and people will actually follow him. And maybe that's how we actually get some kind of civil war or conflict. I don't know. I can't see Antifa lining up behind Biden in any kind of conflict, but maybe they, they hated Donald Trump and many of many of these far left activists voted for Joe Biden and propped him up. And it's really funny to hear someone like Jimmy Dore call, uh, I, I forget what he called, uh, Jimmy's, Jimmy's a lefty, but he called Joe Biden uh, what, like a demented old man and a cop, Kamala Harris, you know. So good on him for calling it out. And so it's, it's people like Jimmy where I see there's probably a lot of uh, uh, leftists who aren't going to line up behind Joe Biden. Maybe Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be the most hated administration we've ever seen. But does that mean the media and the grifters are going to go after them? They can't. It would violate what their brand is. Well, maybe that's wrong. Maybe they can. Maybe it's too it's too much of a blanket statement to say they can't. Maybe these news outlets might just be like, wow, oh, I can't believe it. Look at Hunter Biden. Look what he's doing, which is what they're kind of doing now. Now, Donald Trump isn't going to back down. And maybe that's true. And maybe Trump and Trumpism will persist. And maybe the establishment machine would actually like it. I mean, they're going to need a boogeyman, right? They want their boogeyman, but they want their power. That's why we see stories like this from the Chicago Sun-Times. Get ready for Donald Trump's shadow government. Other Republicans in a fear of the wrath of Trump supporters will obstruct Joe Biden at every turn. That's what's happening right now. But this story is from almost a month ago. Would they stand by these same statements? CNN said it. Axio said there will be a decoupling. And so I do think it's fair to say that we are in serious trouble, that we're on the verge of some kind of major conflict. And I think it's funny, too. I'll point this out, that Michael Tracy, I respect the guy, I think he's a good journalist, has repeatedly dismissed the idea of any kind of civil war or conflict, saying that these people are just pushing this idea. It's fear mongering. But if you, Michael, if you're going to write a story where you say America's first shadow president, the election may be over, but the political influence of the former commander in chief is not. I think you're actually arguing what I and many other people have been arguing. Trump's not just going to walk away and Trump supporters will not accept this. For Unheard, he writes in his first few paragraphs, essentially, the Electoral College has voted for Joe Biden. I'm not going to read through everything he says, but what he does say, quote, what's far from over, however, is the political influence of Trump. No one can say with total certainty what he'll do when he eventually leaves office. No one can even say exactly on what terms he's going to leave. But in just over a month now, we may face a scenario that would be a first in modern U.S. history, an aggrieved former president making a competing claim to the presidency and refusing in per perpetuity to acknowledge the reality of his defeat. In other words, a shadow president, Trump's lack of compunction about doing something like this would seem to solidify his position as the most thoroughgoing post-exceptionalist president since at least World War II. That is, He's entirely unmoved by the kind of bipartisan American exceptionalism dogma that had previously bound together the elite U.S. political class across party lines. 
It, it's the dogma which holds that. In short, the U.S. possesses a singular uniqueness that sets it apart in all of world history, often blended together with notions of Christian providence. It describes the very foundations of the U.S. constitutional order with a kind of divine import. Let me let me slow down and kind of bring this all together. I'm going to get to the point. The media needs Trump and needs the boogeyman. But what if they don't have that boogeyman? Well, then the media will start to lose influence and any kind of singular cohesive message that we have remaining will start to break down. As the Internet and social media became more and more prominent, the establishment elites have desperately tried to control it. They weren't really paying attention to what was happening online several years ago, and we ended up getting a Donald Trump presidency. They panicked, and now they're banning people left and right. And we're going to come to the point where only verified individuals will actually have the right to speak. We saw it on some websites already. I'll keep it family friendly and not mention what those websites do. But they got rid of all non-verified content. We're moving towards that on YouTube. That's their desperate bid to control things. But what happens if Donald Trump doesn't go away and his supporters remain on places like Rumble, a video hosting site, or Library or Minds.com? What happens when they communicate on Parler? And we get two distinct media ecosystems. Without Trump actually in the presidency, is anyone on the left actually going to care about what some old man is doing at his golf resort? Probably not. But his supporters will be listening to him. They'll be listening to him and they'll be following many of these politicians. Maybe that will be enough to ignite some kind of conflict where we'll actually see a balancing of the main of different mainstream media apparatuses, apparatus I, whatever the word is. Here's what I'm trying to say. The media is collapsing. The grifters are losing power because they don't have the boogeyman. They are going to lose much of their influence. But Trump supporting networks will stay where they are, which means they'll kind of even out as to the message they're getting out, who's listening and who is supporting which side. It's exactly what you need for some kind of elevating conflict. I don't think necessarily that Trump will be a shadow president, but honestly, I don't know. I do think it would. part of me wants to believe that Trump is just going to say goodbye and leave when he gets out of office. But I don't think Trump's just going to leave outright. And what if they do try to arrest him? I saw a post, you know, a couple weeks ago, they said that 23 percent, 23.6 percent of all U.S. dollars were printed this year. Now more posts are going around. They're saying it's actually up to 35 percent. This is bringing about serious concern and fears of hyperinflation. So you know what rich people are doing? They're buying up property. They're buying gold. They're buying Bitcoin. Bitcoin now at its all time high, like twenty three thousand dollars. The people who are supposed to be in the know are acting like some bad stuff's about to happen. So what happens if the mainstream media loses its boogeyman, loses in, loses influence, can't maintain a cohesive narrative over the left and the resistance, starts to break down and smaller networks emerge and remain in place? Different factions, different tribes, and a recipe for total chaos, a loss of confidence in the establishment government, and the fact that both progressives and Trump supporters alike hate Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. The progressives may hate Donald Trump more than they hate Joe Biden, but let's be real. Everybody hates Joe Biden except the crony establishment. And that is not enough of a coalition to remain in power. Now, we can talk about what constitutes a legitimate government and official documents, whatever. But really, it's just about it's really just about confidence, as I've said over and over and over again. And let me show you what breaks that confidence from just the news. Ken Starr to the Senate. Pennsylvania flagrantly violated laws ahead of presidential election. Apparently, Rand Paul said a dozen states or two dozen states changed their rules without going to the legislature, calling those result, uh, those votes into question as well. In Arizona, Republicans uh, in the Senate have issued subpoenas to Maricopa County for ballots and election equipment. The challenges aren't over, and the confidence is, is, is what is important here. The media knows that they're on the verge of collapse and they can't afford to, to stay afloat. The country is being divided basically straight down the middle. Trump supporters don't trust the mainstream media, and for good reason. And the left doesn't trust conservative media because they're told by the mainstream media it's fake news. So what ends up happening? The grifters are, are losing power. 
The media in turn is losing power. Trump supporters are growing alt alternative networks and ways to communicate and things to share. Parler may be an echo chamber, but Twitter is an echo chamber on the other side. And at the very least on Twitter, both factions make their own echo chambers. Now it's worse on the left because conservatives do know what the left is thinking for the most part. But what happens when you see evidence come out of Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and the left says there is no evidence? You can talk about Trump and his shadow government. You can talk about all the fear mongering, whatever you want. But it's regular people. It's not the Trumpism movement. That's just the boogeyman for the left faction. In the end, all that matters is who will believe who. I think the media is going to collapse. I think they're panicking for good reason. But something else will happen. We'll lose maybe a lot of the New York, the New York Times may lose a lot of influence. But Antifa style websites, progressive news outlets will emerge in their stead. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the New York Times will just have to embrace further far left policies in, an, in a desperate effort to keep people in, engaging and interacting with them. They'll claim Republicans are the authoritarians. Trumpism is the problem. But think about what Trump, Trumpism is. What? Working class families asking for better trade agreements? Boring. The far left is talking about banning private health insurance outright. They're talking about having a mandate for who you can have on the, on, on the board of certain companies. They're trying to repeal civil rights law in California. They want complete overhauls to the system. They think all cops are bad. And while I've certainly been on a cop rant from big cities, not all cops are bad. That's absurd. They want way more extreme positions. The mainstream media is entertaining them in a desperate bid to maintain some revenue and relevance. So they will give the far left exactly what they want. And the right will go to right wing outlets and to, to, you know, to websites like Parler for their communications. And that will cause the decoupling of this country. So call it what you want. Tell me I'm wrong, whatever. First things first. It's funny to watch the media panic. What comes next? Honestly, I can't say. I'm not a psychic, but I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up tonight, live, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL. Check out the show. We'll be talking, out of, uh, talking about a bunch of other news stories. Maybe go more in depth on many of these stories. And uh, again, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL. And that will be live at 8 p.m. Thanks for hanging out. And I will see you all then.